for the international action as we always do and throughout the club season whenever that club season re returns next weekend we're really into the thick of things into the sort of the last home stretch some thrilling title races relegation battles not just in England all over the world and tune in to flash score read reports on the website updates we will keep you abreast of every single game you could possibly think of now here's Robbie Brady and small one over a free kick that has been won on the right touchline after Olivier Dumont had caught Coleman with a, a swinging arm left foot of Brady right foot of small bone players lined up just on the edge of the D in red and green Brady will deliver uses the win and floats it all the way into the back post Dumont good work that time gets up above yeah. Doing some defensive work now, the Donegal man. Back doing some defensive work now, the Donegal man. And he's doing some excellent work there, but Trossard manages to hold on to it and make demand. Plays it lateral to face. Trossard. Franks. There's Demand. to Vinter now in the centre circle so looking towards half time of course there's international friendly there's always a chance for some changes, you look at the Irish bench there, there's some quality on there Finn Azaz, I mentioned the young middles were forward in their first international call up Matt Doherty, Festi Abasele Adam Ida great goal scoring for him since his January move to Celtic Mike Johnston who's in great goal scoring for him since his January move away from Celtic, West Brom now Jason Knight, Ryan Manning, Jimmy McGrath, Michael Oberfemi, and Jake O'Brien, Callum O'Dowda, Mark Sykes, as well as the goalkeepers, which are Gavin Bazunu and Mark Travers. For Belgium, then, Batshuayi, Zeno Babas, Jeremy Doku, Romelu Lukaku, I said he is on the bench, whether he'll be risked, given that he was a doubt to even make the squad today, we'll see. Lukabakio, Mangala, Mounier. Joe Nana, Everton, Teat and Vertonghen so as we're into the last minute of the 45 you might see some of those at half time let's say we might even see a goalkeeper she's now Smodrix is getting behind here and deflected over the top great work by Sammy Smodrix so he claims it was deflected it looked it to me but the linesman says goal kick but the Blackburn Rovers man there getting on the end of a flick on from Evan Ferguson and indeed he did put it over himself under pressure by Timothy Castagna Ferguson up above De Vinter to win the initial header and Smodix from a narrow angle on the left hand side with a first time left footed effort over the top of the net but that's a good effort there by Sammy Smodix and that link up between him and Evan Ferguson is one that will excite Irish fans that's what they've been looking for and right on the stroke of half time they were treated to and almost a goal we're into one minute of first half stoppage time here now at the Aviva Stadium, Bakayoko was into the right corner, good challenge by Robbie Brady and he's on the ground and <laughs> gives the, the linesman a bit of a death stare there, he put the last touch coming off the Belgian but corner kick it is it's close, a great challenge by Brady clean as a whistle, we'll see if the last touch does indeed come off, it does, it looks like it Robbie Brady has a point so Ireland have a corner to defend what might be the last play of the first half here in Dublin Bakayoko delivers and it's another poor one headed away at the near post by Josh Cullen with it sadly looks at his whistle Belgium will give an opportunity to try and come back Bakayoko beats Cullen nicely Franks with a cross and Keller almost dropped it but holds on to it the second attempt and that is that at the end of the first half here in Dublin in fact I think Keller was given a free kick anyway, but that's yep, it is the end of the first half. John Mache packs up his coat and goes down the tunnel. He'll be pleased with what he's seen in the first half from his Ireland side. A missed penalty from Evan Ferguson just before the half hour mark could have had them ahead. Otherwise, they certainly I think they've edged Belgium in this first half. A tight first half. 
Which has seen efforts from Sedozi of Benny and Sammy Smorix to trouble the Belgian goal by some moments of magic from this Belgian side, but really, Kevin Keller is a fairly easy half. So join me shortly.
Here, Mitchy Bachwai is on for Timothy Castagna. Thomas Meunier is on for Yuri Tillemans. And Jeremy Doku, the Manchester City man, is on for Leandro Trossard. So that'll give the Ireland defence something to think about in the second half. Meunier is going to take up the right back position. Castagna was in in the first half and take the captain's armband off the also replaced Yuri Tillemans but Ireland get us back underway playing left to right here unchanged in the first half Brady's cross immediately in for Ferguson over the top 10 seconds in Evan Ferguson with a great chance for Ireland he reached a wonderful cross on the left there from Robbie Brady and the Brighton striker just couldn't keep his header down he got in between a nice bit of gap between centre half and left back between Faze and Demont just couldn't keep his header down great start to the second half though Brady what a ball and Ferguson leaping off the ground and that gets a big round of applause from John O'Shea I'm sure that was pretty much the, the sum of his half time message but now here come Belgium there's the cross in from Batchway it comes back to Franks and he Miss hits a shot well wide but both sides have had efforts on goal within the first minute of the second half here in Dublin so they said Ireland unchanged the line up there is Keegan Kelleher, Seamus Coleman, Dar O'Shea Andrew Omavamadile and Robbie Brady and Nathan Collins making up the back five there Josh Cullen, Will Smallbone and Sammy Smodix in the middle with Chidotia Benny and Evan Ferguson up front that that formation's switchable. Colin somehow into the midfield and went into a 4 3 3. Belgium now have Matt Sells and go. Thomas Mounier at right back on for Castagna. Voight Face, Coney de Vinter, and Olivier de Mont. And then they've got Michi Bachwai, after Vance, Jeremy Doku, Johan Bakayoko, and Lewis Openda. There's Doku. Wins the ball back in the left corner off Seamus Coleman. He's into the penalty area now. Jeremy Doku. Back to Demont, left corner of the penalty area. Back to Doku under his right foot, faced up by Ogbeni. Goes back to Franks. 1 2 with Demont. Small bone chasing him backwards, and they'll go all the way back to halfway with Faye tonight. De Vinter. Aaron missing the penalty in the first half if you missed that one. Evan Ferguson slipping in his run up and 
fairly routine save for Matt Sells in the Belgian goal all told Ireland probably just shaded in the fairly even first half here's Faze to Batshuayi and then Mounier back to Batshuayi and now Faze in the centre circle That's why coming deep for it. There's Dumont. Left touch down for Doku. That's why, of course, had a bit of a traumatic weekend in football as this Finner Bache side were attacked by Trabzon score fans on the pitch after winning the game on Sunday evening. And images of he and next to his teammate Bright to save Samuel. Having to defend themselves from those Trubs on score fans for the unsightly scenes, but here's Thomas Mooney, who actually plays for Trubs on score these days. Right there to Baki Yoko, who goes inside two Irish defenders, one of which is Robbie Brady. And he's won a free kick, well as the PSV Eindhoven man. So, free kick to Belgium on the right hand side, pretty much from a corner kick sort of range. He and tried to go in between Brady and O'Shea and in the end I think it was the trailing leg of the Preston man Robbie Brady that caught him so he'll dust himself down though and take this free kick himself went back to over he had left for the delivery only Sammy Smodix in the Irish wall and that's them all concentrating in the middle and it comes from back to Yogo Kelleher comes out and punches back in with Batch why De Vinter couldn't get a shot away he was down not sure why he's hobbling a little bit gets back to his feet here's Arthur Vermeeren Doku left hand side midway inside the Irish half faced up by Coleman here's Aster Franks nice touch from Openda looking for Batshuayi now Doku hurdles a challenge himself it's back to Vermeeren and Doku again left hand side midway inside the Irish half faced up by Ben but he was back to the centre circle for Faze he clips one forward, right footed is a good one. Bakayoko nods it down. Openda on the volley and oh, Kelleher saves and almost spilled it into the feet of Batshuayi. But the Liverpool goalkeeper holds on at the second attempt. A good effort there by Lois Openda. Give Keevan Kelleher a bit of trouble. That came from Bakayoko's knockdown. Openda just to the right of goal hitting that one. Uh, both Collins and O'Shea throwing themselves at it but in the end Kelleher now uh, when you see the rebound again there was no way he was letting the former Chelsea striker Batshuayi get near that one five minutes into the second half and we've had a, an eventful start to the second period here in Dublin this international friendly live this Saturday evening on Flash School UK with me Mark Strange I said to you earlier We'll have England versus Brazil at 7 o'clock and France versus Germany at 8 o'clock on these airways too. Make sure you tune in for those. Flash short, keeping you abreast of all the international action this weekend and on into the midweek. Ireland will face Switzerland here on Tuesday as Sells comes out to get a, a through ball that was intended for Evan Ferguson. And Belgium will go to Wembley to take on England but the England players are running up for their match now but if they manage to catch any of it the first half they I'm sure they'll be happy enough that they could deal with what Belgium threw at them it's appreciate it's only a friendly some young players in this side but Ireland as I mentioned earlier just edging that first half really Doku risky pass almost intercepted by Smodix but instead De Vinter will come forward now Batshuayi back in your boot it Franks in the centre circle. Demon back to the centre circle again for Faze. For Merrin, back to Faze, right to the left, touchdown for Doku. Faced up by Seamus Coleman, he's so dangerous in these situations, Jeremy Doku. On the right corner in the penalty area, but Omabama Dile says no more, and away comes Ogbene. Now he's another man who's dangerous and given space to run and he's given plenty here Franks and Demon are over there with him now but Ogbeni is still twisting and turning gets into the corner and is fouled there I think by Franks indeed or 
Norwegian referee Rohit Sagi agrees with me and that's a free kick to Ireland so Ogbeni there not really given the chance to fully stretch his legs there weren't many green shirts up with him but he did a superb job of taking the ball to the Belgian defence holding on to it and then in the end attracting the foul from Aster Frank so it's going to be a free kick here to Ireland the left foot of Robbie Brady or the right foot of Will Smallbone I'm going to send this one into the middle where Darryl Shea and Nathan Collins Sammy Smodic, Seven Ferguson Shadilti Ogbeni they're all lurking in there can they get a good delivery here and give these Irish fans in the Aviva Stadium something to cheer about Brady left footed has his right hand in the air Smallbone disappears a bit of a dummy in the free kick now Brady will take it left footed delivery and the wind takes it Woo, and not a great delivery in the end but the wind caught that delivery from Brady and put it under the roof of the net of Matt Sells but he was looking for more than that Preston man that left footed delivery and the wind really played havoc with that one and so that we start to go from late afternoon early evening skies and the the darkness starting to creep in here in Dublin. There's Coleman now as a throw in for Ireland on the right hand side. And then for Ogbeni, who's strong as well, holds off the challenge of Damon and now Faze, he's still going Ogbeni but eventually he just loses out there and Faze hooks it away but only as far as Coleman. He tries to find Smodic, so well read by Devinder. And that's back with the Ireland captain Seamus Coleman, excuse me. And Omavama Dile goes back to Kelleher just outside his box. He's in all green, or, or no blue, sorry. Ireland in green shirts, white shorts, green socks, of course. Belgium in dark red shirts with gold trim, black shorts, and dark red socks. Here's Cullen, who we didn't see quite as much of in the first half as Ireland would have liked, but now Brady, plenty of him, down the left touchdown, faced up by Mounier. Dinks one in the back post for Benny, oh, just couldn't sort out his feet in time, and the ball. Drifts past him out for a goal kick. I think he got caught in two minds there. Chidotzi of Bene is whether to throw himself out of his head or his foot in the end. Didn't either, and the cross just evades him. It was teasing delivery from Robbie Brady, who's back in the Ireland side for the first time in over a year, and he's been good. Well, just over the head of Ferguson and Smodix, but of Bene arriving at the back post. And just couldn't quite commit to what he wanted to do with it. Now Brady again down the left. De Vinter wins a header, but at the concession of a corner. So 10 minutes into the second half here at the Aviva Stadium. Robbie Brady, a man in form for his club side, Preston North End. And he's causing plenty of problems here for the Belgian defence. And it's like a, a throwback towards Robbie Brady, a hero at Euro 2016, scoring that late winner against Italy. So the last major tournament Ireland were at. They won't be at Euro 2024, but it's fair to say the build up to the 2026 World Cup is starting tonight. Smallbone is ready to take this corner, but Rohit Sagi, our referee, is not happy about a bit of jostling in the penalty area. And the whistle blows, and Smallbone, left hand in the air, right footed delivery, and it comes. That's a good one, flicked on by Ferguson, but. And loops up over the bar and that Ireland spell of pressure comes to naught but as you see John O'Shea down there on the bench as I mentioned looking very suave in his all black suit and his black roll neck down there he's traded the Ireland tracksuit and the earpiece for his managerial suit he's at least going to be in charge tonight and on Tuesday but well, he might be seeing this as a bit of an audition for himself uh, the FAI saying that they'll announce their a permanent candidate in the next month or so. As you see a familiar face down there who now is donning the, the tracks at the earpiece, another former Ireland international, Glenn Whelan. And of course, Brian Kerr, the former Ireland manager, managed John O'Shea, among others, back to help out his former player in the dugout. It's, it's a bit of a, a gaggle of Ireland players just sort of lurking down the corner. I wouldn't even quite call what they're doing warming up. Cameras on them now, so I think they're forced into doing 
some uh, some stretching. Perhaps not most enthusiastic warm-ups down there. But it's a windy night here in Dublin. That some rubbish blowing across the pitch here now as we see those subs jogging back to the bench. There's five or six of them there as we approach the arm mark. Aaron haven't made any changes. Belgium made that triple sub at half time, so perhaps John O'Shea is thinking of springing some subs from the bench. But it's a free kick here to Ireland now. Delivery from the right from Will Smallbones. A good one. Really good one, but headed away by De Vinter. Oh, Benny picks up on the edge of the box. Smallix first time shot blocked with a face of White Faye. That's going to hurt. I'll go and come all the way back now to Robbie Brady in the centre circle. And now Collins, like centre half out in the wing. As is O'Shea, good delivery. That's not the two you thought were out in the left wing, but O'Shea's delivery is well cleared. Smallbone goes back to Brady on halfway. Clips on forward left footed looking for Smodix, but you know, well, the wind took that or he just put a bit too much on it. It's out for a goal kick. The wind certainly seems to be blowing. If not straight up and down the pitch, it's certainly favouring one side over the other. And at the moment the wind seems to be behind Ireland's backs, whether that's helping them or hindering, I don't know. As we get another look at Vite Faye blocking that one square in the face, that's going to sting, but getting in the way of Sammy Smollick's first time effort at the edge of the box. If you approach the arm mark here in Dublin at the Aviva Stadium, it's Ireland nil, Belgium nil, as she was Coleman files Jeremy Doku on the halfway line on the left. He has a word for the referee and for the Manchester City man Doku there. Not quite convinced about that one was Seamus Coleman. It looked a fairly even tussle between the two, but as is so often the case, the attacker gets the benefit of the doubt in a decision like that. There's Baki Yoko back to Demont on halfway. Olivier Demont of his club football for Wolfsburg in Germany. And then here's Coney de Winter, the centre half, making his debut this evening on loan at Genoa from Juventus. Frank's another one of these young stars for Domenico Tedesco's side, only 21 years old. Now Doku on the left hand side, how dangerous is he? He's shown it in the Premier League all season. Frank's looking for Doku in the return, great sliding interception with Seamus Coleman. Well, I think even Coleman will be the first to admit Doku has him for pace all day, but Coleman read that one like a book and makes a good interception. Now the ball's back at Sells, midway inside his own half as the clock ticks over minute number 60 here in North Dublin. Arden nil, Belgium nil. This international friendly live on Flash Score UK. Entertaining 0 0 0 game as Doku finds Bachwai in the penalty area. He managed to get a pass away, but Colin read it and gets it away before Doku could get to it. It's a throw in to Belgium on the left hand side. Which Olivier Demont has that ball in his hand ready to take. Coleman sticking touch tight to Jeremy Doku. Small bone intercepts, but only as far as Franks. And now Demon has it back on the left hand side, but is forced to go back to Vout Faze on the halfway line. Franks. Back to De Winter. Franks again, midway inside the Irish half. Scanning, looking for options, and plays a lateral pass to Jeremy Doku, who even from a standing start can be dangerous, but chooses to conserve his energy and goes back to Demon. Now Faye's on halfway. Demont again. Uh, Belgium, well, that pass is well intercepted by Omabama Dile, but Franks gets to it first. Now Mounier. Back to Yoko. Great work again from Robbie Brady. He's been excellent this evening. And we still half an hour to go. He and I already shout for man of the match if things stay as they are. Super return to action for his country for Robbie Brady this evening both defensively and going forward he's been solid at the back and a threat going forward now here's Vermeeren now on the right hand side is Mounier Brady's over again and Mounier volleys across in good header away by Coleman ahead of Bachwai now Franks right to Demont lining up a shot left footed oh a block by Josh Cullen he's going to feel that one I hope that didn't hit him where I think it did now here's Doku back to his feet on the left hand corner of the penalty area Cullen is back on his feet but he's looking let's just say winded I'll say no more here's Olivier Demont Left footed delivery and it comes and headed away by Brady again at the back post. Franks under pressure by Ogbené goes back to De Winter. And now Meunier on halfway for Belgium, the experienced campaigner. Openda, a nice little flick, but Collins read it. It'll come for 
Bakayoko or Penda again. I'm up on a delay. Strong defending of the Nottingham Forest man. And away come Ireland now with Ogbeni. Looking for a green shirt and finds Robbie Grady in space on the left hand side, midway inside his own half. He's covered some ground tonight, Robbie Grady. Here's Smallbone. Good game from him too. Smodix. Always gets the Irish fans out of his feet here. And R into his debut. He's impressed. And he whips a nice pass across the pitch to Coleman. Now around 30 yards from goal. Back to Omobama Dile. It's a back from Cullen, who appears to have recovered from his uh, the block. Ooh, that's a loose pass though from Ogbene and throw in to Belgium. That brings that spell of Irish pressure to an end. And now we're going to see so They're actually going to be on the Belgian side. Another couple. One of those coming on is Everton's Andre Onana. Johan Bakayoko is coming off the PSV Eindhoven man been a frustrating evening for him because of Robbie Brady's excellent performance out there on that right hand side he's going to be replaced I'm not quite sure I haven't quite seen who is coming on for him just yet let's see how Coney de Vinter the debutant centre half is going to be replaced by Andre Nana the Everton man who is a midfielder by trades I don't know whether he's going to drop into the centre of defence or we shall see, but he's on, and the man to replace Johan Bakayoko is the Sevilla man, Dodi Lukabakio. So it's Lukabakio and Onana on for Bakayoko and De Vinter. And it does indeed look like Andre Onana is going to take up a centre half position beside Vout Faiz. He is big enough to do it, don't get me wrong, but he's been a a rangy midfielder for Sean Dyche's men this season perhaps his club manager will be looking on with interest here to see how he fares at centre half looks at four at the back now for Belgium, Mounier, Onana, Faze and De Mon. now Benny is going to test them here as he comes forward down the right for Ireland Cullen the right touch line for Coleman Ogbené ahead of him but now they didn't quite read each other Ogbené was on his heels there and De Mont clear so five changes made already by Belgium as now Cullen and Coleman get in each other's way and that's a throw in to Belgium just in front of the Irish dugout where John O'Shea stands five subs made by Belgium we played 65 minutes Ireland yet to make a change there's some interesting options on the bench there for John O'Shea as I mentioned particularly well, here's one man getting ready who has been in the goals as of late. Adam Ida on loan at Celtic from Norwich and has hit the ground running in Glasgow. He'll be coming on for who we shall see. So he's also got the likes of young Finn Azaz on the bench and Jake O'Brien, the Leon centre half, is having a standout year for his club despite their struggles and other options on there too. Coleman now in the centre circle Cullen with a scuffed pass but still finds Brady he's faced up now by Luca Bacchio as the Sevilla man will hope to get a bit more change out of Robbie Brady Ogbeni, lovely touch on the right hand corner of the penalty area, faced up by Demon. he cuts in Filo, he beats Demon on the right foot small bone in space, spins, turns gets it to Smolix, shots the block by Onana it comes away again to Smolix that's got the Irish fans on their feet, back to Cullen now Small boom. Not much room in that penalty area, but Sammy Smolik still got the shot away. Here he is now trying to take on Mernier down the left. And he gets across it. It's a good one. Coleman at the back post, but Demon will flick it out for a corner. And great pressure here from Ireland. Sammy Smolik's getting the shot away. A good block go by Andre Onana. Initially, of Ben did superbly to beat Demon. Small boom didn't quite get the ball under control enough to get a shot away, but he did a good job in laying it off to Smolik's. Taking a couple of defenders with him, and in the end, Smodic shot that was heading for the bottom corner. We just saw the view from behind there, so Onana did a good job of getting in the way. Now, here's Smallbone to take the corner. Left hand and left arm in the air. It's going to be a right footed outswinger from the Southampton midfielder. In it comes, flicked on, and O'Shea, he didn't quite make good enough contact with it. I think it came off his shin really in the end, and out for a goal kick. So, nothing comes from that one, but I think we might be seeing. At least one Ireland sub here. We saw Adam Ida getting himself stripped 
he scored the last goal of the Stephen Kenny era in that 1-1 draw here with New Zealand back in November and it was James McLean's last game for his country there's Luca Bacchio, a lovely skill but Smorich says I'll take that, thank you very much and now it's back with Darrow Shea who will go back to Kevin Kelleher who has been I'm sure he was probably expecting a bit more work in goal but just over 20 minutes to go, we don't want to jinx it yet but Liverpool goalkeeper gets the ball back from Cullen and sends it forward left footed Onana wins a header well over Ferguson so far Onana has fared well in that role of centre half Ogbeni in the centre circle hurdles a challenge of Vermeeren and lets Smodix take over and he sprays a crossfield pass on the foot of Seamus Coleman but the head and hands from him and the apologetic hand says it all he looks to the sky there, I don't know what happened to poor touch characteristically so from Seamus Coleman and Smodix's lovely crossfield pass comes to naught And you see it again, just, just perhaps he was looking up and was ready to run down the touchline before the ball had even got to him, and he just let it slide past him. There's Brady back to O'Shea. Smodix almost loses out to Luca Bacchio, but instead O'Shea goes to Collins on the edge of the box. Oma Bamadile goes back to Kelleher again under pressure from Batshuayi, but... Cooley plays it forward with the left foot. Onana volleys it back towards him, and the wind is going to hold that one up in the air. And Kelleher, though, will come out and claim it. Well, just over 20 minutes of normal time to go here. You're listening to international friendly action here this Saturday evening. Aviva Stadium in Dublin. It's still Ireland nil, Belgium nil. Ireland have edged this one, and Evan Ferguson had a first half penalty save, but plenty, plenty to be positive about for John O'Shea and for Irish fans in general that's a bit of a heavy pass though from Smallbone looking for his captain Coleman and that's out for a throw in I told you I saw Adam Ida getting ready a while ago and now I think we are going to see him along with a couple of others indeed Adam Ida first man to come off in is Jadotio Benny who has been his usual enterprising self and he's off and Jason Knight is on for him uh, a man who started often under Stephen Kenny and I'm sure will under John O'Shea whoever the next one is Evan Ferguson also off that's the end of his night on 70 minutes he's off for Adam Ida a Celtic Loney night will be leading the line and the third man to come off is Sammy Smodix an excellent debut he gets a rapturous round of applause from the Aviva Stadium crowd finally seeing him in the green shirt he gets a, a welcome to the bench from John O'Shea. He's had an excellent game and coming on his base. Michael Johnston, who, while Adam Ida came into Celtic on loan, Johnston left Glasgow on loan, has scored some wonderful goals and stolen the hearts of West Brom fans since his move in January. So there's a triple sub for Ireland. Coming on, Knight, Ida, and Johnston. And coming off then, of Benny. Ferguson and Smodic, so basically a, a front three change for Ireland and immediately looks like Ida will lead the line, Knight to his right and Johnston to his left Demont to Doku and he gets a turn on Seamus Coleman and draws the foul from Coleman on halfway not that they are in captain agrees but now the man whose opinion matters Ruit Sagi, a Norwegian referee he says indeed there was a foul and and again you can see why he thinks so so free kick to Belgium right on halfway right on the left touchline in front of the two managers John O'Shea and Domenico Tedesco here's Onana Meunier back to Vermeeren almost loses it and Franks who has been just 21 has been a real metronome in that midfield this evening for Belgium Doku again draws a foul this time from Smallbone more centrally but just inside the Irish half so the free kick for the Red Devils is there no just the ball now with Dimon so Belgium only in 
Euro 2024 group alongside Slovakia and Romania and they'll also face the winner of the playoff B winner and it's going to be the winner of Ukraine and Iceland who will face off in the playoff final on Tuesday night of course the Path A Euro 2024 final is Wales against Poland and Cardiff and Ukraine against Iceland in Path B and Path C the one that Ireland so desperately wanted to be on but instead it was their, it was their group stage for their qualifying group opponents Greece they were playing Georgia on Tuesday night for that final spot to make up this summer's Euro 2024 and a major tournament for Belgium Coleman now down the right hand touchline that's a ball to nobody in the end and Faye's going to watch it out for a goal kick I think it was Adam Ida was trying to find but not so for Seamus Coleman as we approach the last quarter of an hour here of this game at the Aviva Stadium a game not exactly a one that has caught fire too much but certainly a lot to be positive about for Ireland if this some people as much as they were excited about this one also a bit of trepidation because of you know really what has come before for Ireland in that qualifying group alongside France, Netherlands, Greece and Gibraltar rather well, disappointingly didn't take any points off Greece that was the one they really wanted to target I think everyone knew that France and the Netherlands were going to be the top two in that group but Ireland were targeting that playoff spot but defeats home and away to Gus Poyet's men meant that well, it is they who will take on Georgia and choose his playoff for the Euros now Luka Bakio great pace to get away from Brady he's in the penalty area cuts it back to Meunier oh what a save Keevan Kelleher a super stop from the Ireland goalkeeper with Thomas Meunier, the Belgium captain, getting forward on the edge of the box. Dodi Lukabakio with some wonderful pace down the right hand side. Getting the better was Dar O'Shea, who got pace, no shame there for O'Shea. Lukabakio was rapid. And the cutback to Meunier in space and diving save from Kelleher. The corner's taken short to Doku. Back to Meunier on the edge of the box. Now Vermeeren's going to hit one big looping deflection off Smallbone. And that's another corner for Belgium. But that's a super save by Keevan Gallagher. And truthfully, the first time tonight that the Liverpool stopper has really had a save to make. And my goodness me, isn't it good that he panned that one wide? Because that he put that one out, Lewis Openda was waiting six yards out to tap in the rebound. And he put it round the corner, round the post for a corner. And they've got another one here. Which Luka Bakio is going to take a left footer in swinger this time from the substitute who really give Dar O'Shea some fits there but Ruiz Sagi is going to have a word with Voight Faze and Adam Ida who are having a bit of a grapple in the box Ida pleading his case but the Norwegian official is not having it but that's that chat over and now Luka Bakio will deliver left footed in swinger flicked on by Damon well headed away by Robbie Brady comes a Doku in the left corner of the penalty area faced up by O'Shea an unusually heavy touch to the right Johnston Doku vicious shot over the bar and Jeremy Doku they'll want that one back Michael Johnston thought he had nicked it off the Manchester City man's toes but I think he needed a stronger challenge from him and allowed Doku's face to get a right footed shot away that was vicious but Kelleher was watching it all the way over the bar into the smaller end behind the goal and mentioning there of Ireland's qualification group well Belgium they top theirs unbeaten 6 wins and 2 draws from qualifying group F ahead of Austria who will be joining them in the Euros and Sweden who missed out and Azerbaijan and Estonia as well so Faye tonight for Belgium. It's 
So they back the cells under pressure from Ida. Belgium having out a little spell here as Ireland have had throughout this one. Let's not forget that. Faye's now on the edge of the box. Ida chasing him. Here's out to Demon. And here's Jeremy Doku in the centre circle. And here's Luca Bacchio faced up by Johnston now. And Brady and O'Shea are all over there. The Belgian winger really given defence problem. I think Brady left one in there on him and indeed it is going to be a free kick much to Brady's disappointment. A free kick here as we're in the last 10 minutes at the Aviva Stadium. You're listening to me Mark Strange live on Flash Score UK this international friendly this Saturday evening. Ireland nil, Belgium nil at the Aviva Stadium. Where's the ball? Quick free kick taken for Openda. Oh, he went down there. I think he came and he was caught by Kevin Keller, but nothing doing as the referee. And Belgium are incensed. Ireland had their penalty in the first half awarded. That one not. The free kick taken quickly again. It was Luca Bacchio. Openda tries to get on the end of it. Knights there as well. And Kelleher came out and had to be very careful. Yeah, that's, that's one of those ones you've seen them given. A free kick almost catching Ireland out and perhaps. Our goalkeeper Kevin Kelleher will be breathing a sigh of relief as Rohit Sagi is a bit of a grimace and a, a wag of the finger at a, I assume, a Belgian protest against that one. But now it's Olivier Demont is on the ground. I didn't quite see what happened to the Belgian left back. He's rubbing the base of his back, and we're going to see. At least one other Ireland sub as Matt Doherty is getting ready to come on. It's just Ida and Demon went for the header and Celtic man leaned into the Border Bremen defender. Ireland, as I say, will be taking on Switzerland here in Dublin on Tuesday night. I'll have you covered across that one for Flash Score UK. That's a 7.45 kickoff midweek and Switzerland will be kicking off here in around 20 minutes time or so in their friendly of their own against Denmark so I'm sure Sean O'Shea will try and catch a bit of that one to see what they're going to be up against on Tuesday night I say two really exciting friendlies two big established European nations as we see that sub now. It's going to be Robbie Brady. The end of his night on 80 minutes for Matt Doherty. A superb return to the national team for the Preston defender. Well, he was a, he's was he been a forward, he's been a winger, he's been a midfielder. And tonight he put in a great shift at left back, left wing back. Which he has been doing more often for his club. Dangerous going forward. Solid at the back. And that's a super evening all round. As I said, he leaves here on... 81 minutes, he'd be my man of the match, that's for sure. As Belgium are ready to get things going again with their goalkeeper, Matt Sells. Not really many other games to keep you abreast of at this stage of the evening. Most games kicking off later at either 7 or 8 o'clock, including that game Denmark, Switzerland, England, Brazil. An intriguing game at the San Mames in Bilbao between Uruguay and a Basque Country 11. The first time the Basque country will play a game in an official game since November 2020. Now at 7 and 8 o'clock, Croatia, Tunisia, France, Germany, which is live here on Flashcore UK. They are both 8 o'clock kickoffs. That's where at this stage it's Slovakia nil, Austria 2 in a friendly as Luka Bacchio runs one over the, the line. Hassled by the new man Matt Doherty, so good work from him coming off the bench. An incredible one in Bratislava. Six seconds is what it took for Austria to take the lead. Christian Baumgartner, straight from kickoff, took the ball straight from kickoff and just, well, just ran at the Slovakian defence. In and out like a skier. And then he went, and well, now we're going to see something you don't see too often. We're going to have a goalkeeper change here for Belgium. I appreciate it's a friendly, but often when you get goalkeeper changes and friendlies, it's at half time. They get 45 minutes each. Unless Matt Sells maybe has complained about an injury, I'm not sure. 
but he's off. And the man coming on to replace him is actually Shetuzio Bene's Luton Town teammate, Thomas Kaminsky, also a, an ex teammate of Sammy Smodix at Blackburn Rovers. So, goalkeeping change here for Belgium with about six, seven minutes remaining of normal time. And this will actually be an international debut, a senior international debut at the age of 31 for Thomas Kaminsky. Last play for his country under 21 level in 2013, but a first international senior appearance. And there he is, gets the first touch with a back header from Andre Onana. So congratulations to Thomas Kaminsky. Perhaps that's why Domenico Tedesco wanted to get him on now, perhaps thinking on Tuesday night at Wembley against England he might not get an opportunity to do so of course Thibaut Courtois still out injured you wonder there's chat he may be back before the end of the season for Real Madrid well if he's back does he go straight into the Belgian team as Cross comes in over the head of Batshuayi away by Collins Knight appears to have left one in on Astor Franks but referee plays on Doku now in the middle of the park out to Luca Bacchio there's Doherty the new man marking him back into Doku to turn away from Colin Grit's footwork from Jeremy Doku, he's just so dangerous. Here's Demont. Doku. Back to Demont. He's a solid game for Belgium, I would perhaps put his name forward as a him or Aster Vranks of the players who are still on the pitch that started the game for Belgium as a solid contender. And I mean, it says a lot about this game, really, whenever. Robbie Brady and Olivier Damon I'm putting forward the two left backs as perhaps the standout players for each team but as we've got five minutes to go here across Stoppage Town in the Aviva Stadium this international friendly between Ireland and Belgium still poised 0-0 and there's a ball forward from Onana looking for Batshuayi but too long and the Fenerbahce forward appreciates the effort from Onana a bit of quarterback style pass there for a man who has said normally a rangy midfielder for Everton but on to replace the debutant centre half Coney De Vinter just after the R mark and has played alongside Voight Faze as a centre half in a back four and now we're going to see another sub here for Ireland it's going to be Will Smallbone withdrawn another man who can be quite pleased with his efforts this evening the Southampton midfielder he's off and coming on is the Udinese man, Festi Ebesele, and another real young prospect for Ireland. So by the looks of it this evening, we, now we've only about four and five minutes left to see senior international debuts for Finn Azaz and Jake O'Brien. Perhaps we'll see them on Tuesday night against Switzerland, which is a game now I say I'll be covering that one for flash score. I'm looking forward to it. This Ireland performance today has given me plenty of optimism for them ahead. And one that I'm sure Irish fans and John O'Shea and the Irish players will be looking forward to. Nothing to lose in these games and they're playing without real freedom here. Ida now trying to get off for Mirren. Here, Ebosele, first touch, right hand corner of the box, but good tackle by Damon. Another super defensive effort from him. And Doku tries to go away from Coleman and he looks for another free kick and Coleman is not happy with him it's gone out and it's been not been given by Rui Itzagi it's a, a throw in to Ireland instead and Doku I think is gesturing the referee saying how many times is he going to go down under a tackle for me when I haven't fouled him but Ireland get the throw instead and he goes and puts it down the line to Ida followed out there by Faze and Vranks good strong challenge by Astor Vranks and now he's going to give Openda something to chase Collins Shepherds it back to Kelleher who comes out and Oma Bomadile completes the clearance but Onana will pick it up midway inside his own half. For Mirren, terrible pass straight to Ebosele. Two on three for Ireland, but they've got men coming forward. Ebosele trying to go himself, block by Faze, and it'll just go for a throw in in the corner. So that's what he brings in on playing with club football in Italy for Udinese. He's a, just a, a hard run with the ball, Ebosele. He looks like he's going to be playing as a forward here. He's certainly been in forward positions. He's coming on, he's another one. Capable of playing as a full back, wing back, winger, so and he's playing in front of Seamus Coleman and perhaps that will allow Jason Knight who is playing on that right wing to kind of drop into his more 
Fever midfield there, where Will Smallburn was out with it either right into the corner. It was super work from the Celtic striker to win the corner off Demont. He was right in the corner. That could have gone anywhere, but with two and a half minutes of normal time to go here, Ireland have a corner, which will be taken by Michael Johnston here. Their right footer out swinger from the West Bromwich Albion man. As the wind is picked up again here as it's kind of come and gone here throughout the night. Johnson now right for the right swinger and it comes flicked on by Ida and away by Batshuayi nobody in green getting the end of it Eva Sele trying to send it back in there but instead plays it straight to Batshuayi he's going to give Doku something to chase and Eva Sele's quick and he keeps up with him he can't but Doku still has it on the left cuts inside Eva Sele Jeremy Doku approaching the penalty area looking for one for Mounier to run on to it's too long and out for a throw in right in that far corner and uh, Jeremy Doku scratches his head I think as do many watching that's not his usual Accuracy that we're used to seeing from the Manchester City man, and well, as we look at Dominico Tedesco, the Belgian manager at the minute, it looks like he's going to keep his unbeaten run as their manager, extend it to 12. But certainly plenty to work on for them at Wembley on Tuesday night, as Ireland might be tuning in here shortly to Switzerland's game in Copenhagen against Denmark. And I'm sure the Belgian manager and maybe some of the players will be. I mean, keeping a, at least a, a watchful eye on England's game with Brazil at Wembley which we'll have for you live here in about 10 minutes followed by France-Germany 8 o'clock both of those live you can listen to all full 90 minutes of both of those friendlies live here on Flash 4 UK as we are into the last minute of the 90 here on Nana striding out of defence for Belgium but no options he goes back to phase now here's Luca Bacchio who is Giving that Ireland defence something else to think about on the right. A, of, a plethora of attacking talent for Belgium. While they haven't fully clicked tonight as his pass cross field to Doku is intercepted by Coleman who hooks it out for a throw. While Belgium haven't fully clicked attack wise tonight. So you have to, for you can't forget they haven't played together since November. It's only a friendly but look at the, the names on paper. They're certainly... You like to think they're going to be a threat at the Euros in the summer, but we did think that at the Qatar World Cup in 2022, and of course dumped out in the group stages, which is what saw Roberto Martinez leave. And he then took over as Portugal manager and has done the same as Tedesco has at Belgium and hasn't lost a game. Made a great win on a friendly over Sweden on Thursday night. We're into three minutes now of added time here. Mounier and Vermeeren coming forward for Belgium as they look to try and maybe get a winner that would be, I'd say, pretty harsh on Ireland at this stage. Luca Bacchio faced up by Johnston on the right wing. And they're looking for Batshuayi, but Knight gets in there well and wins the free kick off Batshuayi in the edge of his own box. And that will relieve the pressure valve there on Ireland, which well, has been getting stronger and stronger as this game's gone on. But don't be fooled, Ireland have certainly had their fair share of possession of trouble with Belgium. We of that Evan Ferguson penalty saved in the first half and there has been plenty for John O'Shea and for Irish fans in general to be pleased about to look forward to I said O'Shea only confirmed for tonight and Tuesday against Switzerland with an announcement on a permanent manager expected in the next month or six weeks and no clue as to whether Ireland have any idea any names lined up of course Lee Carsley former Ireland international current England under 21's manager he ruled himself out despite revealing he actually spoke to the FAI after Stephen Kenny's resignation at the end of last year he's committed his future in the short term at least to that England under 21 job the two men who are facing off in that path C Euros playoff final on Tuesday Willie Sanyol former French international charge of Georgia and Gus Poyet in charge of Greece both linked with a job but well, I'd be here all night if I ran through all the names linked with the job. It's as long as your arm, but John O'Shea has certainly put in a good example of why maybe he should be considered for the role. He is this Ireland team have played with freedom. Well, I grant that it is a friendly, but they played with freedom. They have troubled the Belgian defence. He's called up young players, attacking players. It's a squad that has given Irish fans some hope after coming out of a a relatively toxic period in Irish football history. Things aren't perfect yet as Collins holds off Okenda and 
O'Shea clears to Ida in the center circle with just a few seconds left. Vermeeren. Things aren't perfect, as I say, for Irish football at the minute, but certainly looking a lot brighter on the horizon. And we'll look forward to bringing you that game with Switzerland on Tuesday night, where maybe we might even see a bit more attacking. Some more goals. But for now, oh, I thought that was a little bit early. I thought Ruhit Sagi had his whistle in his mouth, but Belgium still have it. Meunier and Collins gets in there, head of batch wide. Sends it long down the pitch. And that may well just do us. On this occasion, Meunier won't even get a chance to take the throw, and indeed it is finished here at the Aviva Stadium. Goalless between Ireland and Belgium, but plenty for John O'Shea to be positive about. Irish football, there's certainly a bit more of a positive outlook on things going forward as he goes to shake the hand of Domenico Tedesco the Belgian manager who still has some positives for him to take and also a lot of thinking to do ahead of their trip to Wembley on Tuesday night but Ireland will look forward to Switzerland's visit here on Tuesday night with increased optimism they trouble Belgium tonight at Evan Ferguson's first half penalty save but thanks to Sammy Smodic Shadidza McBenny Robbie Brady Seamus Coleman the list goes on some great performances on the night from Ireland. Well, small bone too as they see him walking off. But it's finished here tonight at the Aviva Stadium. Thanks for joining me, Mark Strange.